Hi, I'm Seth Dyed of the Jack Jackson Podcast. In each episode of Jack Jackson, you'll follow the adventures of 1950s private investigator Jack Jackson, along with your favorite recurring characters, his assistant Kitty, Peter the Landlord, the villainous Rube Goldberg, rival detective Emerald Keaton, as well as new characters brought to life by our voice actors. Each episode delivers a new film noir mystery accompanied by sound effects, historic events, and pop culture references, all of them 100% correct. And to recreate the style of an old-time radio program, we include a show sponsor and record each episode in the dark in front of a live studio audience. It's a unique improv comedy experience with a touch of nostalgia that always delivers plenty of laughs. So sit back and get ready for another episode of Jack Jackson, in which Jack takes on his toughest case yet. I was on my way out of the office. Oh, Jack! Jack, um, before you leave, I, I just wanted to clarify something. Um, uh, I was going over all my old notes that I typed up all these months, you know, all those times that you were saying things and I typed things up dutifully. I put my coat on and grabbed my hat and I was out the door. And, 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 Jack! Yeah, okay, okay. Let's hear it, Kitty. Okay, so anyway, I was looking over these notes, and, and there's this case that you were working on that never really got resolved. It was about the, the parabola, the, the paradiddle, the... Paradolia. Uh, the paradolia. <laughs> Sorry, That's right. Sorry, my, my typing wasn't very good, and I don't know how to spell that. Paradol, paradoli. They were some cults, right? That's true. That's actually where I'm about to head. Oh. I'm teaming up with my arch nemesis, Rube Goldberg. Oh, oh Jack. Idea. I, I'm, I'm afraid I have to, Kitty. I've been ordered by the mayor. But, but Jack, I, I'm your partner. You, <clears throat> wait, am I not satisfying you as your partner? Whoa, you're a very satisfying partner, Kitty. Oh, but, <laughs> but sometimes I don't think I do the things you like. Oh, the way you use your fingers on that typewriter is amazing. Oh, uh, thanks. Listen, Kitty, I, I have to. Unfortunately, this is something that's bigger than me. I'm just a small-time private eye. I'm just a small-time private eye. <laughs> I, I have to team up with Goldberg because, you see, these Paradolia people, the cloaks, they're, they got their fingers in everything. They're all over town, and they say they're ancient. Oh. An ancient cult? That can't pass this up, Kitty. This could make my career. So, okay, so it's going to be you and me and Rube go. No, Kitty, I'm sorry. I think you're going to have to set this oh, one out. But, Jack, I'd be so worried about you if something ever happened to you. I, I don't know if I, if I could ever, if I, um... Listen, Kitty, you keep your head on straight and just keep on a rap-a-tap-tapping on that typewriter and I'll be back before you know it. Uh, oh, okay, Jack. Uh, and if, you, if I'm not, uh, I'll... Bye. <laughs> I headed down towards the docks. It was the only place I knew to meet Goldberg. Somewhere real public. Somewhere I knew people would be around. I'd be safe there. I knew he couldn't pull anything. I had to keep my eyes peeled. Goldberg agreed to work with me on this one, but I wasn't sure why just yet. All I could be sure was that he had an angle. Kettle corn! Come corn! There was a man standing at a popcorn booth under an umbrella. He had those crystal blue eyes and slick back blonde hair. Oh, it Papa, was... Papa, could you get me some popcorn, Papa? Papa, they walked why up. are you so silent, Papa? It's just my birthday, Papa. Get me popcorn. Well, come on over here, little boy. I'll give you some free popcorn. Oh, Never mind your father. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> you are so kind, unlike my Papa. Uh, go 
Goldberg. It had to be Goldberg. I could see right through that apron disguise. Can Only you? he would give out something for free. Damn dirty socialist. Kettle of caramel, young man. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, where did, where did my papa go? I don't see my papa. Oh, I'm sure he's fine. Just keep eating the kettle and caramel corn mix. Oh, son, help me. I got stuck in the trash cans again. Oh, no, papa, you are so clumsy. You know, I have two left feet. I'm sorry, I would have paid for that popcorn, but I tripped and fell in these trash cans. <laughs> you have a good day now, young boy. I headed over. Jackson, you're late. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. I'm just here to pick up a double butter deluxe. <laughs> Stick to the damn code words, Goldberg. I'm more of a hiding plain sight man, you see. No one here will suspect a little seed seller like me. You come down here to my docks and you sleep, s- sling your seed all over this place. Oh, well, you know me. All right, Goldberg. Come on behind the counter. I stepped behind the counter. There was a trap door right below on the floor of the docks. Give me another 15 minutes and I'll close up shop and be down there. (laughs) I have an assistant down below who will debrief you on what we're doing today. All right. But I don't trust you, Goldberg. I know you got some sort of angle. My angle? My angle is whichever one flatters me most. (laughs) Uh, I climbed down the chute staircase. There was a grizzled man sitting at a desk in a basement on the docks. He had swept back graying hair and stubble on his chin. He was sitting at a typewriter. Ah, you must be Jackson. That's right. And you are? Cardi Cartwright. Cardi Cartwright. I'm Rube Goldberg's assistant. Huh. So Goldberg had his very own kitty. (laughs) So... I understand you and the boys. Mind if I pour myself a drink? Well, of course, it's what it's there for. Help yourself. This open dock basement bar, thank you. Absolutely, dock liquor's the best liquor you can get. Mmm, <laughs> dock liquor. All right. All right, closing up shop for the day. Goodbye, patrons. Oh, I want my popcorn. All right, gonna just throw all this popcorn no, down. No, please. Shoot. Come on, man. You gotta give me some popcorn and eat some. Watch out below. Here comes some popcorn. Oh, there's still gonna be some buttery goodness on the ducks. And I'm gonna wee. He <laughs> went down that fire pole. <laughs> all right, Cartwright, let's hear what you have to say. Well, from what I understand, you guys, when you went through the Mullerone Mansion last time, the, the, you went down into the, where the cult does their stuff down under the ground. That's right. That was some couple of months ago. So according to the notes that the boss paid some guy for, uh, those tunnels go even deeper than you were able to find out. Deeper under Dock City? Indeed. There are tunnels that are so extensive that they seem to go under the entire city. What could that... that cult be running with underneath Duck City. What? There's nothing down there. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? <laughs> so you get to play good guy today then, huh, Goldberg? The mayor's just gonna let you walk out good. after everything you've done. Good I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna need another. You drink as much as you want. We're taking this special batch of popcorn, and we're heading as deep as Duck City can go. <laughs> I'm so excited that Mr. Goldberg saw fit to bring me along on this particular mission. Oh, well, Cardi's real close to retirement. I want to give him some excitement. He, he, he knows how to treat an assistant and bring them along on missions, not leave them at home all alone. <laughs> yeah. Being sad. Why would I do that? You're so useful, and you're my best friend. Oh, you're sweet, boss. I appreciate that. He gave him a big hug and a kiss on the cheek. Oh, come here, Cordy. <laughs> oh, watch the stubble there. Oh, that's okay. I'll cut my lips for you anyway. <laughs> they pulled a poster of Marilyn Monroe off the wall and showed a secret tunnel they had apparently been digging. Oh, I love that Marilyn. She's going to be big forever. <laughs> All right. So this is, this, is, this is it then, huh? Everybody grab a bag of the special popcorn and let's go. Special popcorn? What's up with this? No, I'll tell you when it's important, Jackson. All right, as long as it comes back up. It will. <laughs> I grabbed a bag of the popcorn and Cardi Cart. Oh, and don't eat it! <laughs> Do not eat the popcorn! <laughs> you too, Cardi. I know you are a muncher. Oh, I like to snack, boss. You know how that is. Cardi stepped forward and headed down in the tunnel, lighting a flashlight. 
We made our way down into these tunnels, deeper and deeper into Dark City. <laughs> so deep, my inner monologue was even echoing. <laughs> we came to a large open cavern. It seemed like the sewers drained off into some sort of underground lake. We've already set up a, uh, a, a small watercraft that will get us across this particular piece of water to the rest of the tunnels. I'll be glad to fire it up, boss. Shall I do that right away? Oh, yes. <laughs> There's no need to observe this putrid scenery. <laughs> we stepped... <laughs> we stepped down into the dingy little boat and made our way into the darkness. Oh, I wish that... Motor wasn't so annoying. <laughs> I'll have to tune it up later. It sounds a little weak if you ask me. Yeah, I'm surprised it's moving three grown men. <laughs> it sounds like we're getting a shape. <laughs> the motor started to slow down. I knew this would be a long time coming. It's a good thing these go downhill. <laughs> Here comes the flume shoot. Get ready. Ooh. I lit up a cigarette. <laughs> hey, Jackson, quick tip. Don't smoke next to the popcorn. All right. Spoiler well, it looks alert. like this trip's going to take us a while, Goldberg, so maybe we should level our playing field. I was born. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought you wanted, well, okay, level no, the playing I... field. I heard you say this is going to take a while, so I immediately went to biography. But we don't have to do that. No, you know, I was curious, Goldberg. I've been chasing you all over this town for... Feels like years now. And I've never heard it from your side. I've never heard what you have to say. What drove you down this path? I was born! (laughs) (laughs) To a lovely family in southeastern Michigan. Oh, Rube, you are my best little boy. You're going to grow up to be the best man ever. Thank you, Papa. (laughs) Oh, you spoil the child. You spoil him. Oh, let me have my fun. I'm Madam Goldberg. This came from the school today. All A pluses again. Oh, Rube. You're such a good little boy. He takes after his mother. (laughs) May I have a candy? (laughs) Oh, yes, you may have as many candies as you'd like. Whoa, whoa, let me stop your flashback there for a second, Goldberg. If this is really what the childhood you had, how'd you end up being the most intelligent, smartest, super criminal on this side of the world? Well, I was born intelligent, so that was taken care of. But one time, over and over and over, I ate so much candy... But I grew, I grew quite large, and I was sent to a remedial weight loss camp. And it was there that I fell in with a bad crowd. I am your instructor, Doctor Jimmy and Michaels. You'll lose weight. <laughs> oh, I hate these aerobics, don't you, Rodney? Oh, I definitely don't really like to do these aerobics, Rube. I think we probably gotta, uh, maybe I don't know, do something about it. Maybe we could. Take over the camp ourselves. Oh, you're bad. I've never broken a rule. Oh. Rube, it's so much fun to break rules. It's the best thing ever. You should you should really try it with me. <laughs> oh, and then Jackson. So wait, you're telling me you're telling me that you were in camp. Yes. And a guy told you to break rules. Yes. And that's how you became a super criminal. Well, I hated that weight loss remedial camp so bad. You could never understand. I had to eat broccoli. (laughs) Here's your broccoli, sweetheart. Yeah, pile it on high on your plate. That's all to have here is broccoli. You see, Rube, we gotta do something about this. We could make this right, you and me. We could do it. These little trees are so gross. (laughs) I know. Everything they have to eat here is gross. Kale and seeds. It's all little trees. It's rotten. We we need to do this, you and me. Come on. I'm running out of my secret candy stash. What? Francisco, dare you say not? I say... All I have left is an enormous pile of just sugar. It's Can just you sugar. Please? This is your instructor, Miss Michaels. I have somebody in here has a candy stash. Oh, did you now, Miss? I think I can take care of that for you, Miss Michaels. Me. Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> oh, and by the way, that's when the future president showed up, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> 
You there, young man. I hear that you're that you're looking to eat some candy. Why don't you come on over here? What's your name, little boy? Well, my name is Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg. Listen, I have big aspirations. Oh, right I... now, I'm just a cow farmer. But one day, who knows? I, I thought you died. <laughs> nope, you didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're very misinformed. And by the way, I would never tell the lies. This young man has a candy stack. <laughs> so you, so you, young Rube Goldberg, do not have a candy stash and have not been partaking in no candy stash? Oh, no. And if you look for his candy stash, you'll find that it has all been recently well, removed. Well, I think we know what to do. Uh, Miss Michaels, let's send this one to prison forever. Yes, oh. we shall send more. No, please. I just wanted to have some glucose. So, Jackson, <laughs> to sum up, I stole all of that young poor boy's candy, framed him for having it all in the first place, and I made an inroad with the future president of the United States. <laughs> I see. All in one summer at remedial weight loss camp. <laughs> we pulled up to a what looked like a small harbor. Mm. And by the way, I lost 42 pounds. I haven't touched the stuff since. <laughs> the door uh, at the end of the harbor leading into the wall in the sewers was marked with a tiny little uh, brain. The symbol of the Pareidolia cult. There it is. So, this is it, Goldberg. Me, you, and your secretary. Yes. Now, Cardi, please take these three bags of popcorn and place them next to the door. Okay, Mr. Goldberg, here I go. It's one, two, and three. Jackson, the door. this material is made out of some of the most highly resistant material. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> this door, I meant to say. Well, I have not found a way past this door in all my years in Dark City. I see, I see. All I have ever wanted is to know what those silly chanters get up to. Hmm. Today... You're going to help me find it. Well, what's the popcorn got to do with it? Why don't you go ahead and light up another cigarette? All right. <laughs> now, uh, why don't you throw that cigarette? That uh, seems like a waste. Well, uh, I'll get you another pack. <laughs> throw that cigarette of the popcorn, please. All right, here goes. One, and a two, and a... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> The whole door exploded. Did you hear something? Something? Yeah, I hear something. something. Oh, I thought I heard a loud noise. No, was... The darkness within was void-like. It's not popcorn. It's boom corn. <laughs> boom corn. I'm writing that one down, Mr. Goldberg. Thank you. Please have that sent to the copyright desk. <laughs> we'll do. Boom corn. Trademark. I, I drew my gun and we took a step forward. Jackson, you take the lead. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> yeah, you want me to go first. Seems about right. Yep. Even though I had to work with Goldberg, I couldn't help but feel like I was walking right into a trap. Something wasn't right about this. It was too obvious. Too easy. This Paradolia cult was as old as they said. Then they would have a, an idea of what was coming for them. I stepped forward into the darkness. I do. What's your move now, Goldberg? First, we have to find out where that sound comes from. You see, we're so far below the ground, and the, the, the tunnels and sewers down here are so expansive that they could be chanting in any chamber, hmm. and we would hear it clear as day. Let me try using my extensive detective knowledge. I put my hand on the wall. I felt vibrations from in the cave. <laughs> yes, I could feel them. They were growing stronger in this direction. I started making my way, following my detective instincts. Yes, yes, I feel it. Mmm, I'm getting good, very good. Well. <laughs> Ah, uh, I had to follow those detective vibrations. <laughs> Red hot. <laughs> there oh, it is. Okay, I, I definitely think I heard something that time. No. All right, you pareidolia cultist motherfuckers. I kicked the door. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. 
I drew my gun. <laughs> Jack Jackson's here and you're all under arrest. Damn, weren't you here like months ago? That's right. It took us a while to get back here. But I'm here. Ah, talk about holding a grudge. Protect the device. Retreat into the antechambers. Nice. Please. Paradolia, cultists, please help me. Mr. Nobody Jackson moves. Has, you there with Mr. that. Mr. Jackson has me and my beloved assistant hostage. What? We should play we're, along, you idiot. Oh, yeah, right. We're, That's right. I've gone uh, dirty. These, this man here is my hostage. And if you don't turn over your whatever your device is and tell me what your plans are, I'll scare his brains across the... Wait, you came hundreds of feet underground to threaten us with a hostage? That's right. Yes, we are totally captured and in great peril. The two of you are being held hostage by him, by the one person. That's right. I got a gun and they don't. (laughs) I frankly don't care what happens to either of them. Do you care what happens to them? I only barely remember this person from several months when they were uh, here. Do we have any guards guarding the device? Keep the device safe. Safe. Perhaps you will remember a certain name. The name Arthur Goldberg, my father. Arthur Goldberg. Arthur Arthur Goldberg. Goldberg. Retreat. Retreat into the antechambers. They jumped up and started climbing up the walls, heading into an upper level section. They they pulled a lever at the top of the stairs and it turned into a slide. Ha, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I love this thing. This is why I became a cultist. <laughs> There's no Six way up slides. those stairs, Goldberg. Our ruse of being hostage situation didn't work. We gotta get up there. I really thought they'd be more impressed with my father's name. He was very important. Something something about that, huh? Why did why did they run away when they heard your father's name? I pulled well, out my grappling hook and started taking aim. After after I got home from one remedial two, three, weight loss camp four five yeah <laughs> my father my father was gone and my mother my mother had been driven insane oh <laughs> mother please please mother <laughs> mother what are these drawings mother please tell me where father's gone don't you see it Rube? Don't you see the images in the images that I've drawn? Oh, let me put on my 3D specs. <laughs> it's Paradolia, Rube. What's it's Paradolia? Paradolia. <laughs> I miss your father. Oh, I miss everybody. And I miss Candy. <laughs> I see. Let's climb up this grappling hook. <laughs> We slowly made our way up, trying our best to keep up. But without those stairs, they're gonna get a lot of headway. Oh shit, they have a grappling hook. Keep oh, going, run, 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 run. We got into the antechamber. There were three doors, large and iron. All of them were closed and locked. We had to make a decision now. We wouldn't be able to keep up if we didn't get those doors open. Oh, it's like a riddle or something. <laughs> Uh, all right, Rube, this is your expertise. I'm the detective, you're the super mind. Yep. You gotta figure out which way we need to go. We gotta e- find that device and stop whatever they're up to. Uh, eeny meeny. <laughs> My name. Catch a Jackson by the throat. <laughs> this, this, this is science, Mr. Jackson. This is science. Eeny meeny miny mo. He pointed at the door right in front of us. You want I should punch this one, boss? Oh, please. One more punch wouldn't do you no No, 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 no. Here we go. Ah. Oh. God dang it. Foiled. Meaty, meaty, mighty mo looks every time, boss. Every time. You're so smart. Cardi. So smart. <laughs> the door you. slowly swung open. <laughs> now come on out, you two. Tell me where my father is. What? You didn't tell me that's what we're here for, Goldberg? Well, I'm here for as many reasons as... There are reasons, but one of them is to reclaim my father, or at least know what happened. We stepped into the room. It was lit by a glowing red light. There was a huge machine, a man in an iron mask standing on top of it, a black cloak hanging, black gloves. I see you have returned to the place where you will die. So... You must be the leader of this cult, huh? Around us, there were a bunch of cultists with their bendy, curvy, twisty cultist knives. (laughs) And Chad, Chad the cultist. (laughs) Do not see my sweet, sweet iron mask. I'm the only one with one. Of course I'm the leader. (laughs) 
<laughs> he raised his arms out in a huge gesture. Ah! <laughs> Since you are here, Mr. Jackson Detective, we will tell you all about our giant device. Our giant mind control device. What? Oh, yes. Mind control? Since we're going to die, tell us all about it. It does no harm. <laughs> It's capable of controlling every brain of every man, woman, and child in the nation. Oh. All it's missing is a purple diamond. Oh. How entirely ridiculous. The concept of a purple diamond. How could anyone... Hilarious. Be, how rich or intelligent or conniving... You shut up, Chad. <laughs> Chad the cultist. Unfortunately, you must die here, all in the name of Paradolia. Whoa, 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 whoa. Paradolia. Uh, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down uh, before you all start chanting. We did it. My dear boy, Carty. Rube. You know how, you know how I care for you. Rube. Indeed, boss, I know all about it. You, you have always been kind and generous and, and a real outstanding human being to me. I need you. I need you too. Reach I know that. Reach into your pocket. I knew it. My pocket, boss? Let me reach in my pocket. The purple diamond magnifying glass. Holy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, we've been looking everywhere for that. Oh, sweet. That that magnifying glass. I I I ran into that one once before on another case some time ago. I didn't know you were even involved in that case, Goldberg. Oh, I... And you had it this whole time. I have my long, slender fingers and everything, Mr. Jackson. Now, what's that behind your ear? What? Oh, got your gun. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> he pulled my gun out from behind my ear. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gary, could I... Uh, sorry, Mr. <laughs> How'd he do it? He grabbed it from my ear holster. Mr. Carty, can I please see that magnifying glass? This magnifying glass here, boss? Yes, hand it over. Well... Think about what you're doing here, Goldberg. If you hand that thing over to the Paradelia cult, they say they can control everyone in the nation with that. Jackson, who, in their right mind, was ever think that they could control the entire nation? Now, you hush up. You're being silly. Carty, hand over the magnifying glass. I'm afraid I can't do that, Goldberg. What? He stepped forward and pulled the mask off. Oh, a twist. <laughs> you see, this has been a long sting operation that the federal government has been <gasps> conducting. It's him. Oh! I should have known. Damn. The one man who always caught criminals better than I did. His name was... He looked like he was about to say it. <laughs> he stepped who, forward. Who in the hell are you? He was about to say his name. I knew it was coming. Giuseppe Malone. No! I've heard tale, but to think that for years you've been at my side. Agent. Pretending to be my humble Indeed. Assistant. This has been in the works for years. We knew that this time was coming. We've been tracking the cult and tracking you. One of the cultists threw off his cape. That's right. My name's not Chad. <laughs> Buttersby. <laughs> Good to see you, Jackson. Agent uh, Buttersby works with us, hey, and he's been in this all along. Hey, right, the whole time. Loyal, loyal cultist, sneak the device out the back door while they're talking all this I, bullshit. I, I got you, boss. Yeah, get it out of here. Well, mister, uh, I guess your name isn't Cultist. <laughs> hey, uh, I was going to... I was going to point this gun at the magnifying glass and threaten the cultists, but I... I guess I'll just have to kill you. Goldberg looked like he was getting choked up. He I might actually be upset that his, his, his secretary betrayed him. The device oh. is safely out the door, boss. Cool, cool. All right, I'm going to keep these guys talking. Okay, sweet. Oh, hey, Get everybody hey. out of here. Okay. Hey, hey Rube. Hey, it, look, hey, look, guys, man. Hey, we... Me. We had some, okay, we had some on, good times, come on, come on. like, you know, that, like that trip to the, to the, to the mountains, like that. Oh, the Appalachian Mountains were such, so beautiful. Oh. I'm just, I'm so enthralled by this, I can't even notice. Oh, how we skied and, and, and Rube slowly drank. walked towards the secret agent. And we drank cocoa, and drank that was cocoa. wonderful. And, was so, was and you know what? You really were a really good boss. I mean that. Like, the guy at the bureau that's my handler, he's terrible. 
Oh, he, you. He, oh. he put his hands on, on uh, Agent Malone's shoulders. I put a lot of pride in how I treat my employees, but <laughs> since it seems that you don't actually work for me anymore, you'll just be in my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackson, he got me. Oh, he, holy he shot shit. him in the head. <laughs> Jackson, I'm bleeding out the back of my head. <laughs> oh my god. Could you guys do this outside or do we have I to just, clean I, this? I, I oh god! Carpet last Tuesday. That's suede. <laughs> Clotty, I loved you. Now, thank you for giving me that purple. His guy. brain fell out of his head. <laughs> Hey, Paranolia oh. freaks, oh. don't you love these? Oh. So much paperwork down the drain. Let me just detach this brain stem, because he's, he's still functional. <laughs> oh, there we go, okay. Now, it would appear that I have a brain, a purple diamond, and a gun. Oh. We turned. There, on the, on the railing up above, the cultist leader stood there, his arms open in a wide gesture. Okay, uh, we just need the purple diamond. You can keep the brain. <laughs> That's super gross. You've already seen what this gun can do to a human skull. What What would happen if I, I shot this purple diamond and you could never control? Damn you, Rube Goldberg. All we have are twisty, curvy daggers. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what to do. I had my gun out. Jackson, I should have taken your backup gun off of you as well. <laughs> You're the only hitch in my plan. That's when he did it. <laughs> Agent Agent Malone pulled his mask off again. What the... <laughs> That's right. It was a bulletproof mask with a fake brain that popped out the back. <laughs> and now... Jack, we gotta get that thing and get out of here. Well, I just... I... Goldberg threw a smoke bomb on the ground. <laughs> then he shot a grappling hook. <laughs> in those... Ah, okay. Oh, take cover, Jack! Take oh, cover! He's got okay, so come many... On. So many grappling hooks! I'm not getting anywhere! I'm tearing this place down! <laughs> no! Oh. You, uh, Rube, you realize the entire city sits on top of these caves. Oh, so we'll be a little bit closer to sea level. Oh, what of it? We're at dock. Goldberg's grappling hook started to reel in, pulling chunks of the ceiling down. Jack, <laughs> this whole place is gonna come down. We gotta go, we gotta go now. The whole city's gonna come down because one guy is pulling on some parts of a wall. Man, I, I wish that boat had a better motor. Let's go. Oh, we ran to back to the boat. Right next to us, another boat with some kind of strange device in it. Where is my father? The cultist and Goldberg standing face to face. Rube, who do you think built that machine? He took off the mask. <laughs> it's I, your father. Oh my god, that's, that's absolute Goldberg. Poppy! Poppy, are you gonna be? I'm sorry, I'm afraid it's true. <laughs> it was it was the device. It pulled off a mask. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's I, right, a I, human-shaped I, machine. I had to encrypt myself in order to preserve my consciousness all these years. Poppy, what happened to you? I went away in that to camp. This is far and I lost beyond your I lost all that weight for you, Poppy. I lost all the weight. And then you came home and you were gone and Mom was crazy and what happened? The building started to rumble. No amount of fatness could make you smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> Tried as I might, my plan failed. Sugar gave me superhuman intelligence that enabled me to transcend. To the cult to... started to press forward. They drew weapons. I put myself inside this, this Fredrickson flat screen <laughs> so that I could live eternally. Well, Father, I will admit... <laughs> the man, the, just a pair of eyes appearing on a, on a flat screen six-inch TV. <laughs> well, okay. I will admit that you have never looked better than you do on that crystal shot. Those lines of resolution are amazing. Truly, it's the future. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, that's the most realistic looking eyeballs I think I've ever seen on You can TV. almost see the actual eye. <laughs> Father. It's beautiful, strangely. Now that I have declared my might and shown you what can be done, 
I give you one more last chance, my son. Join the cult me. pulled out machine guns from under their cloaks and aimed them right at us and Goldberg. Why didn't you stop with the machine gun? Wait a minute. I'm the leader of this cult. I didn't get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> All I got was this kazoo. Well, sorry, boss. It was a big septic requisition. <laughs> oh, just forget it. Just point your guns. Join me, son. Join us. Goldberg, don't do this. You can still turn good. No, Fuck. do this. Do it. Uh, be bad still. <laughs> come on, come on, Rube. If I meant anything to you, you can't do this to all of civilization. You're not. <laughs> he pulled off his mask. <laughs> <laughs> After all, <laughs> my old fat camp buddy, Rodney. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Rube. You remember when you and me were going to take over that camp together? I do. I do. We took it over. Well, eventually we did, after you got tired of pinning, uh, getting all the kids in trouble for uh, sneaking snacks and having s- secret stashes of candy. Yes. Uh, so not to... Oh. How many more masks were pulled off that night? It's more masks than I can count. <laughs> Unfortunately, after the collapse, <laughs> everyone there disappeared. I told you you should have taken me with you, Jack. This wouldn't have happened if you'd let me come along. I'm sorry, Kitty. I should have, I should have trusted you. You should have trusted me. Noted. The only trouble is now, I can't be sure whether Rube Goldberg finally turned it around and became a good guy, or if he's working with his father on that machine. <laughs> and, and becoming a super villain with now untold connection. That was very eloquently put, Jack. So I'll just make a note of that. You've been listening to an all day uh, Jack Jackson, E.I. Sponsored by Fredericton's Flat Screens. A hundred lines of pure resolution. <laughs> lines? It's just lines. <laughs> yes, it sounds great. Right. I'll see you next time. Jack Hi, I'm Jeremy Brent, and I just want to thank you for listening to Jack Jack's Noir. This episode is brought to you by CSC Sacramento Theater. We record live there every first Saturday. You can find ticket info at cscsacramento.com. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us spread the show around, and also we'll release a bonus episode for every 50 reviews we get. Those episodes will be based on suggestions that you leave in your reviews, so it's a way for you folks to get involved. Lastly, if you want to send a message to Jack to read in a future segment, you can send those over to jackjacksonnoir at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next Wednesday. We're live streaming to Twitch. <laughs> Here we go. Try Watch right, the end. You're gonna like that. All right, all right. All right, make your crunchy noises now. What's it like to feel like to be in the post-show bloopers? <laughs>